Hi! Okay, so we are on day five of the five day fall craft challenge. I'm super excited for today. I know I saved the best for last. I'll tell you about that in a minute. But I want you, if you're tuning in live, to definitely introduce yourself. But if you're watching on the replay, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. You have until through September 21st to try your hand at one of these crafts and post it in the designated post in the DIY Sheep Crafts group. So I'm excited to see what you guys come up with. And then that'll qualify you for a giveaway, which I will tell you more about tomorrow. And speaking of tomorrow, I will also be sending out a link to a recap page. So I'm gonna put all five of these videos with all five of the crafts from the challenge on a single page that you can go to and reference and that page will be up until September 22nd so welcome if you're popping in live and I'm really excited to show you our craft today so like I said um, I'm super excited for today because this is my favorite craft and I'm allowed to be biased right so I love throw pillows just sort of in general I think that they're a really neat um, home decor item but it's like you can just change out your pillows and then presto you have a, a Christmas house or a fall house or a spring house and I just think they're like one of the most effective neatest you know home decor things that you can switch out so this is sort of what we're gonna be making and you might be wondering like what exactly this is it's a pillow right with a pillowcase on it if you want to get like extra craft points so your own pillowcase it is not hard I hand sew my pillows all the time I'll show you some of those in a minute this one though was just like a inexpensive um, linen looking uh, cotton pillowcase and this is an 18 inch pillow and the neat thing about it is there's a ram on it now you might be wondering or you might already know where this ram came from so I made felt from my very own sheep their fleece I felted this guy so I made a big piece of felt and I cut him out and then I just hot glued him on there amazing right super easy super cute he's like soft and fuzzy my daughter hasn't seen this yet but she is going to love him I bet it's gonna live on her bed so we are making felt today cutting it out and making a fall themed throw pillow so you might be wondering why this is my favorite craft and we're all entitled to have our favorite craft project from the challenge right so it's my favorite because my farm Copia Cove our signature home decor item that we make is throw pillows we're just known for actually sheepskin throw pillows and I have a couple of them here just to show you what it is we do so I I love tanning my own sheepskins I love everything about it I tan them at home in my bathtub I stretch them I let them dry this is from one of my Icelandic lambs you know that I raised from little baby and still have its mother and um, then I hand sew the pillows. This is a cute little owl one. So these are the type of pillows that I make. I Like I said, I love throw pillows. I hand sew all these. I hand tan my skins. So that's why I love this project. So the only thing that I might like as much as making my sheepskin pillows is making felted fleece rugs. And um, there, there's tutorials actually for both of those things at shepherdlikeagirl.com and I'll put links to those in the comments on the DIY Facebook uh, post. But um, Oh, felted fleece rugs, sorry. So felted fleece rugs, um, the only thing that might be a little bit easier than making a felted fleece rug is just making plain old felt. So this is the felt that I made that I cut my little ram out of for that pillow. And it's really thick. It's awesome. Super easy to do. 
super thick, and it's actually a lot softer than I thought it would be. Um, this is fleece from my spring clip. So with Icelandics, we do shear twice a year, typically. Um, and our spring clip tends to be kind of like the not prime fleece for the most part. It's kind of dirty um, with all the hay that was fed over the winter. And it's our fall fleeces that we tend to sell to hand spinners or um, like those are the ones that I like making the felted rugs out of. So my spring clips are kind of dirty. I set them to the mill. I get back roving typically or batting and then I can make other craft projects. So I'm actually really pleased with my Morit Brown um, felt. So first thing, I guess we should figure out how to make felt. So typically I make felt in a really large frame or my rugs, I use the same frame for that. And it's a three foot by five foot wooden frame with a mesh on it. And this is um, also the same table that I used to skirt my fleeces. So I throw my, my dirty fleeces on and that way all the vegetable matter can fall down through the mesh. But also when I'm doing my wet felting, all the water will go through as well. So there is a video about that mesh frame that I'll talk way more about it on the video. It's on the DIY Sheep Crafts YouTube channel. So I'll also put a link to that in the comments in the DIY Sheep Craft post, which is this. So um, let's make some felt on a mini scale for me. So like I said, I'm used to doing like five foot by three foot felt projects. But today we're going to do a mini one that we're going to hopefully keep it contained to our cookie sheet. So this is just a dirty old cookie sheet from my one time from my kitchen. And then you're going to want some bubble wrap. I like using this pool or spa cover because it's more durable than bubble wrap. Um, you're not going to be able to like pop these bubbles like you would with bubble wrap. So this is what I use for my big felting projects and it just fits nicely in there and you can cut it super inexpensive too, which is nice. And actually all the supplies for my felting is on that post for the felted fleece rugs. Um, that tutorial on shepherdlikeagirl.com. So if you're wondering like where to get this stuff or what it is, it's all on there. So bubble wrap on some sort of frame or you can do it just on um, some plastic wrap or something with the bubble wrap on top. You don't necessarily need it contained in a frame. And then um, this is my, I'm gonna call it my dowel. So since we're doing it on a mini scale, I have a mini dowel and um, this is the one that I typically use for my big projects. There's a one inch dowel in this pool noodle, so it makes it a little firm. And then the, the pool noodle gives it a little bit of give. So you'll see what I'm talking about in a minute, but for my big felt projects, I use a bigger dowel and I like using the noodle. So there's that guy. And then um, I typically also use some sort of nylon mesh. So this is just a like a sheer curtain, a polyester curtain. And this will help um, when you first start felting for your fleece not to distribute everywhere. So we might use it today, we might not. For my big projects, I definitely do. Um, I like to speed things along and not have many mistakes. So if your fleece starts to move around while you're felting too much, you're gonna get thin spots or holes and we don't want that. So other things I have, this um, can also expedite the felting process. I definitely use it on my big felt projects. And this is a carpet roller and it's pretty heavy duty. It's a heavy um, kind of spiky, a little bit sharp. Um, and it just helps the felt to get the fibers kind of meshing in itself a little bit more. So I do, use that on my big felting project. We'll see if we need it for this one. And then you're gonna need some string or these are um, pantyhose, like nylon stockings, uh, because we're gonna be rolling up our little batch, our little sandwich of um, the pool cover, the bubble wrap and your felt and rolling it to get it felted really nice. So you'll need something to tie around that roll to keep it from unrolling. But string or anything will do I like this um, 
just because it's easy it's easy to untie when you use a like a slip a half knot you know not tie a whole knot in it so next we need some fiber this is from my again Icelandic sheep from their spring clip it's just some white roving and I don't know this is a 3.5 ounce ball and I really don't know how much of it we'll need to do the cookie sheet the cool thing about the cookie sheet size is it's like the perfect size for doing little pillow silhouettes okay for an 18 inch pillow I think it is absolutely perfect you can probably you know definitely do one maybe even two if you space your um, felt well so in order to felt you also need um, soap dish soap and hot water so the hotter the water the faster your felting will go and what I'm doing right now is pulling apart my roving there's some hay a little bits of hay in here every once in a while um, like I said it's my dirty spring clip so hay does sneak in there sometimes so the the hotter the water the faster your felting will go but you can felt with cold water it just takes longer so um, what I'm trying to do is pull apart my roving. So I, I use bats too quite a lot um, when I felt because the batting pulls apart super nice. This is really well made roving. The mill who did it did such a fantastic job. They double pin drafted this so the fibers are going in the same direction um, more than some other roving that I've had made in the past and it's just a wonderful product however pulling it apart um, is not as easy because the fibers are going mostly in the same direction and when you felt when you wet felt you really want it your fibers to go everywhere so in my opinion the more you can get your fibers going in every direction the more they're gonna weave together so if they're all kind of going this way, they're really not going to want to felt. Like if I tried to felt this, it would just kind of felt in like a roll or like in strips. So the more you can kind of fluff those fibers and get them going everywhere, the better. And when I use my mesh frame that I was talking about earlier, um, that I'll post a link to that video that explains it better and I'll show you in that video too on YouTube um, because I'm using two by fours for that frame I can do a big fluffy pile of fiber like this in it and it'll stay sort of contained which is really super nice to have those edges to pile your fiber into Yeah, exactly. So um, when I was talking about the roving being double pin drafted and the fibers really all going in the same direction, making it hard to pull apart, Nancy said it would make, um, make it great for spinning. And yeah, it, it really does. Um, like I said, I've had roving made at a different mill in the past and they didn't double pin draft it. They must have just done it once. So the fibers are sort of going everywhere. But um, yeah, this is a really superior product. And I'll just give a shout out to the mill who does my, my spring clips now into roving and bats. And that's um, Mountain Meadow Wool Mill. And they're in Buffalo, Wyoming. And it's, you know, like a good six hour drive for me to go drop my fleece off there. But they are, they're a little bit of a larger mill, but they will take the Icelandic and they do a fantastic job. Um, they're the only mill that I've ever had do like a spreadsheet um, cost breakdown for me before I even brought them my, my fiber, which was amazing. Um, so I just really, really love them. And they, they put up with, definitely they put up with the Icelandic. So a lot of mills won't deal with these harder 
um, you know, breeds of sheep, um, you know, these exotic breeds as they, as they call it, and Mountain Meadow, not only do they do a great job, but, you know, they do take the exotic breeds, so. So you can also, um, you know, if you don't have fiber or you don't want a felt, you can buy, you know, acrylic felt at a craft store, totally, and do this. And I'll show you how to do that. Um, sort of, it's sort of an applique, sort of, isn't it? Like the silhouette. I'll show you how I got that cute picture cut out. Because if you guys know me, you know that my... Um, my freehand artistic skills are lacking, so I really need a little bit of help. Like, I don't know if I could freehand draw something like that. So I did use sort of a stencil to do that, and it was super easy. I just printed it, like did a Google search for like a sheep silhouette, and um, printed that on like a full sheet of um, eight and a half by 11 inch paper on my printer, and it worked really well cut it out and then um, traced it onto my felt. Okay, so let's see if we can get some felt going in there. So typically I would put my piece of nylon, my curtain, my polyester curtain on top like that and then sprinkle my hot water. So this was boiling mm, maybe a half hour ago. So hopefully it won't be scalding hot. And you wanna kinda just drizzle some on there and then press down. And this is, you know, warm hot, so it's not uncomfortably hot for me. I'm just gonna take it off for a second because it feels a little thin in some of the spots. So I'm gonna condense it down so we'll make a little bit smaller piece of felt. Otherwise, we're gonna get little holes and thin spots peeking through. And you'll feel it, like if you're using your bubble wrap or this pool cover that I'm using, when you push down, you don't really wanna feel the bubbles. So that's how you know it's too thin. Um, less so by looking at it. I mean, you could look and see, like if I can see blue through it, it's definitely gonna be too thin. But um, I think feeling it is a little bit more accurate than just visually looking at it. So there we go. And then you want enough water to um, make all of the fleece go down flat. So you don't want any like loft to it anymore. So that's how you know how much water you should have in there is that all the loft has been removed. I'm just shaping it a little bit as I um, push down. So that feels pretty good, except for I have a couple spots on my edges here that are still a little too poofy. There we go. And then I have just dish soap. I always use Dawn. It's always worked really well for me. Um, I've heard that other dish soap works fine too, but um, Dawn is what I use always so just a little drizzle you don't want to like go overboard with the soap because if it's too soapy the fibers are just going to slip through each other but um, not enough soap you know will definitely make the felting go a little slower and this technique is slightly in a different order than how I recommend doing my felted fleece rugs um, 
So normally I don't add soap to my felted fleece rugs until the very end. But because we're making a piece of felt, I'm just shaping it, that's all I'm doing. Um, because we're making a piece of felt, I would rather get it going as soon as possible. So at first you want to start really gently. Um, again, you know, because you're displacing the fibers because they're not felted to each other yet. So you just kind of want to like rub sort of gently. I'm not pushing all the way through the fiber. I'm not trying to like get down to the cookie sheet. I'm just sort of doing a surface rub on there. Just to get them started going. And then I'll show you my shortcut. You could probably felt a, a pretty decent piece of felt um, just rubbing, but it's going to take a long time. Yeah, and periodically, you know, when you're felting, if you're using this um, polyester curtain a lot, this mesh, you'll want to remove it because the fiber will start to felt through the, um, the curtain. So there's that guy, kind of starting to take shape. It is not felted. I mean, I could pull these fibers out super easily, but you can see that it is, um, there's no loft to it anymore. It's wet and soapy. I'll get rid of that guy and I'll get rid of my cookie sheet. And then we'll try not to make a mess or maybe make a mess. That would be fine too. So, um, this is a piece of um, either bubble wrap or the pool cover, which I prefer because it's more durable and I do a lot of big felting projects. Um, and what you want is a sandwich. So because of the size of felt I'm using, I'm just going to fold it into this bigger piece so I don't have um, you know, too much excess because that can get a little in the way. And I'll show you how to roll it. So this is sort of my expediting, you know, as soon as that you're able to sort of, you know, lift it without it totally falling apart, you know, you have to be really gentle at this phase, but you can move it around a little bit. So here is my uh, mini, mini pool noodle, my mini dowel I showed you back here, the one that I use on my big projects. And we're going to roll it. Let's go this way first. And you want to try to get it pretty tight. And then the end here, I'm going to fold it over. Usually I'm, I'm pretty close to the dimensions of my cutout um, spa cover. So I would fold it over because I usually have some fleece sticking out of the end. This one I don't have to because it's well within the dimensions. And then use string or your nylon stocking to tie up with my big projects, I do three, um, three points that I tie, you know, both ends and then in the middle. This one, because it's tiny, I'm just going to do two. And also because it's tiny, I'm going to start with squeezing. So my big guys, um, I roll you know, like literally like this on the ground, um, on, on my deck actually outside, because you can see that, you know, there's a little soap and water coming out. But if you're doing a small piece of felt like this, you can squeeze it. And this just starts getting those fibers felting together. So I would roll um, like 60 times, 50 or 60 times each side. So what I mean by each side is um, there's four sides to a square or rectangle piece of felt and you're going to want to roll from each side and I'll show you. We'll untie it and then roll from a different side and I'll, that'll probably make more sense when I show you. But for this little guy, it probably won't take as, as much rolling so we won't be here all day so
So see, I unrolled it. And so I'd started on this side. So now I need to roll from this side, this side, and this side still. And really, I think I'm just going to squeeze it because it's so tiny. And not put my stocking back on it. And then I need to roll both short sides still. But you can see that it's, it's starting to felt. I'd say it's kind of about halfway there. And um, I walk on mine a lot. Like I'll put it like this even. I would put under my foot and kind of squish, squish, squish. Oh, Anita, go have fun checking your animals. Yeah, it'll be on later. Just hop on the DIY Sheep Crafts group on Facebook and you'll catch the replay. And then I'll also email a link to, um, it'll have all five videos from the replay. So I'll email that out tomorrow for you guys. So rolling and getting it felted. And you want to keep your fiber really warm. So like say um, you're doing this in a cold environment, like it's cold outside or your house is cold or your basement or wherever you do your crafting. Um, you want to try to keep your fiber as warm as possible when you're doing this because it just makes things go faster. So sometimes um, if I have to step away and my fiber gets too cold or, you know, it's windy and my fiber is getting cold, I will um, warm it up again. And on my big projects, what I do is just... Um, I'll sprinkle a little bit more hot water in it, so we can do that. But then also if I really want it hot, I put the hot water on top of the pool cover and leave it for a little bit. I think we did that size, and so we got to do this side. And this is our last of the four sides that we're rolling. But yeah, I'll totally, um, you know, now that it's pretty, getting pretty well felted, you can be a lot rougher with it. You can put a lot more weight onto the fiber without it shifting. So that's, this is the point where I would like put it under my foot and kind of squish it and roll it with my foot just to get more pressure on it. Okay, let's 
see where we're at. Then usually I'll do some finishing work on it. We'll see how well this is rolled. And it's not quite all the way felted yet. Um, there's still a little bit of squish to it. You want it maybe a little bit more rolling, but I'll show you how I get to finishing it. So there's a couple ways you can do it. Um, I like really working my fingers into it. And actually it feels really good. So when you get to this stage where you're working your fingers and sort of finishing, I call it finishing, but really, you know, you're just kind of tightening up those top fibers so that you don't really have flyaways going around. And um, you'll need to add more soap if it starts um, pilling. So you'll feel it. It'll start to, instead of your fingers gliding over it, it'll start to kind of catch. And so that's how you know you need more soap and maybe a little bit more water. But yeah, actually, I really like this. How this turned out already so that was a really quick felting so this side I feel like there's a little bit more friction under my fingers and that's because there's not as much soap so I would probably you know if I was going to be doing this for more than a few minutes with my fingers, add a little bit more soap, but I think we can get away with not. And I'll show you how I use my carpet roller too, because this would be a good point also to use that carpet roller. Soap everywhere. And that's why I like felting outside, because it is um, soapy and watery usually. So um, I only use my carpet roller on top of my uh, curtain because it'll the fleece will get in here and be kind of a pain to get out. It's kind of like making pizza dough, right? And at this point you can be pretty rough with it because it's almost all the way felted. So there is that. And then how I would rinse it is um, in my bathtub, I would do hot water, rinse it in hot water, and then rinse it in cold water, hot water, cold water, until all the soap runs out of it. I have um, a little bit, a little pot of cold water right here that I'm dunking it in, just hopefully so you guys can see it without the soap in it. And then between the rinsings, I'll roll it, roll the water out and kind of squish, squish, squish. And you don't want to um, wring it, but rolling and squeezing is fine. So I'll just keep doing that hot water, cold water back and forth with that same roll and squeeze each time until there's no more soap and then I would call it done for a piece of felt. So there's that. Of course, I have a piece of felt ready to go to finish our pillow. So I'm gonna set this aside. And wipe my hands. And then we'll get onto the pillow, which is also the fun part. I'm not gonna say it's the only fun part. I really love felting, but when you get to like have a finished pillow, that's the best, so. I'm going to move some of my wet stuff out of the way. I'm 
Then I'll show you the stuff we need for our pillow. Okay, so I have my little, this is sort of my all supply basket. It sort of has the same stuff in it all the time, just in case I need something. But got to plug my hot glue gun in because we are going to hot glue that felt on there. And get that going. And then these, this is my pile of supplies for our pillow. Get that hot glue gun warmed up. So this is that piece of felt that I made. Um, it's the same felt that I used for this little guy. And today we are going to make an acorn because this is our fall craft challenge. This is an 18 inch duck feather pillow form. I love the duck feather pillows. I think it like adds a component of luxury to the sheepskin pillows that I typically make. So I love this. Um, but the poly fill actually is wonderful too. This is an 18 by 18 inch pillowcase. Bonus points for making your own pillowcase if you're a seamstress. These invisible zippers are great um, and easy to sew on as well. And then because we're gonna be hot gluing, I made this guy to go inside of our pillowcase so that um, the glue doesn't go through both layers and kind of stick the whole thing together. So I'm gonna put this in before I forget, right? So while I have it here, I'm just gonna stick that guy in there. So here's our felt. And where's my little acorn stencil? I can't find it. Hmm. I'll show you my sheep one. I don't know where my acorn stencil went. So what I do is I just print on like um, uh, eight and a half by an 11 piece of paper, like a stencil from the internet, like a picture that I like, I'll blow it up and print it out and then cut it. Cut it out. So this was this guy. And then I trace it onto the felt. And luckily, because I lost, so apparently I've lost my acorn stencil, I already <laughs> traced it on there because I figured you guys did not want to see me um, you know, tracing out my little acorn on the felt. Like you guys could probably figure that out, right? I just use a, a Sharpie and this is, um, they make like metallic colors like gold and silver and those show up really nice on the dark felt. So that's what I used, um, but with an acorn <laughs> instead of the sheep. So then I'll cut these guys out and there's no real tricks, you know, for cutting these out. Um, you just want to make sure when you're placing your stencils that you're um, looking out for any thin spots in your fleece. I know that there is one thin spot in this piece of fleece that I made. I'm not sure where it is, but it's not where I'm uh, where I'm cutting my acorn out of. Hey Robin. Hey Angela, I'm so glad you guys are going to tune in and watch it later and that you popped in to say hi to me. I know it's a little earlier than usual. I think you guys are liking the evening live broadcast, which is great. Just trying out some times for people that uh, maybe can't make the evening ones. And then I got to do my sheep this weekend too, where I'm doing um, CDT booster shots for my lambs. Hey Nika. Nika just popped in to say hi. So I am cutting my homemade felt with a fall design, which is an acorn. And I'm super excited about this. It's super cute. There's lots of, like if you Google, go on Google and put in like fall, um, silhouette or fall 
um, shape. I think that's what I put in to get the acorn fall shape. Then you'll get some really cool um, leaves and acorns and pumpkins and you know silhouettes of shapes that you can blow up and print out. And to get that ram, I think I put in sheep silhouette and he came up. And sometimes these shapes come up in like an image with a bunch of other shapes, like this acorn might have been on an image that had also an image of a pumpkin and um, an image of a leaf and an apple. And maybe you don't want all of those, or maybe you need to be able to get one of the images on a full sheet of paper to be the right size for your pillow. And what I use for that is Canva to edit it's totally free, Canva, C-A-N-V-A.com. Totally free. You go on there and you can load that image and then crop out the other um, images that you don't want and then blow it up on a in half by 11 piece of paper. So I love that resource. I also make a lot of my images for the group, a lot of my text images on. Canva, the ones that have the words on them, um, because it's just a super easy program and it's, uh, they have a free version, which is the version that I use. I haven't had a need to use the paid version um, because they offer so many awesome features in their free version. So if you're wanting to get into designing some cool graphics for your business, I totally recommend using Canva. And they just came out with Canva for mobile. And I say just, but it was like eight months ago, apparently. I'm just, you know, totally like the last person to know about this for some reason. So I have not tried the mobile app yet, but I've heard mixed reviews about how easy it is to use. But hands down, definitely, like if you're on the fly needing to create some sort of graphic really quickly and you're not at home, I've heard that it definitely is helpful. So I love this acorn shape because um, it wasn't just like a plain old acorn silhouette. It had some of these little cutouts and I thought they were super cute and would be really fun because I'm using such a bright orange pillow for our fall craft. So I was super excited about this one. It just sort of stood out from all the other kind of acorn shapes when I googled fall shapes. So there's that. And then because I traced on one side, there's a little bit of silver, like maybe I didn't cut it out perfectly. So I'm going to use that part that I uh, traced on to glue down. So. because we don't want any of that silver showing through. So I don't know if you guys can see that, but that's how we're gonna glue it. And, you know, zipper on the bottom, so make sure your design is appropriately positioned. And then I put that piece of freezer paper under here, um, just because the glue will seep through a little bit and you definitely don't want to glue your pillowcase to itself and not be able to open it, right? Oh, thanks, Nika. <laughs> Nika's um, blinging on my, my ring. So some tricks for when you're hot gluing. Um, if you get a little carried away like I do, have a stick, a popsicle stick around or something that you can clean up your mess a little bit. <laughs> Thank you. Nancy's also saying serious bling on the ring. I love it. Um, my man, he, uh, he calls me his tall sunflower and so it's a, a sunflower ring that he got me. 
so it's special for us. Yeah, make sure you have lots of hot glue around because I'd be so sad if I ran out halfway through my project and had to wait to finish my pillow till I went to the hardware store, right? And felt, you know, you can shape it a little bit. So, you know, just be mindful of that. I'm, I don't know if I'll say be careful because this isn't like an exact science or anything, but, um, you know, I want like a nice arc to the top of my acorn. So, and just make sure that your corners are kind of glued down a little bit. So, like here, this one is kind of out a little more than I would like. So, I'll show you how I fix that. I just put a little bit of glue on the tip of my stick, just a teeny bit, and then kind of swipe it underneath. That way I'm not getting like glue everywhere, right? Make sure I'm doing the right side, that my silver is down. I think I want to glue the easy side first. And you just want to do it in small chunks because you don't want your glue to get um, hard, you know, start to cool and get hard because then you're not going to get a good stick to your fabric. And I'm gluing to the felt. You know, I'm placing my glue on the felt, not the fabric. That's just because I feel like the fabric is a little porous. I feel like if I put it on the fabric, I'm just gonna push the glue right through, but probably doesn't make that much of a difference. If you guys are just joining in, if you guys are live with me, say hi where you're from, what craft that you've liked so far from the five day fall craft challenge. Like I said, this one's my favorite, but I'm totally biased because uh, I love throw pillows. I love making my sheepskin throw pillows. It's sort of my signature home decor item that I make for my farm page, which is copiacove.com. Those are my Icelandic sheep. And that's, you know, when I go to craft shows and fiber festivals, that's, um, that's what my booth is called, Copia Cove, because that's my farm. Try to keep your glue under control. Oh, hi, Lucy. Lucy is Nika's, one of Nika's kids. I got to be there right after Lucy was born. How long ago was that? Is, that four, is she four now, Nika? Oh God, she's five? Jeez. Time flies. Gotta tell ya. So there's my adorable acorn pillow. Maybe I'll go back and add a couple little leaves or something in there. But that just came right out, right out of there, so I didn't have any terrible glue problems, which is awesome. And I'll take my 18-inch pillow. This is my duck 
down pillow form. And how cute is that, right? Okay, so go to Google if you're not good at freehanding like me and download um, a, silo a sheep silhouette or a fall shape. Print it out, cut it out, make your felt. And look out for that email from me tomorrow because I will be sending you uh, a link to all five replays. It'll be all on one page. So you can do like a binge watching craft-a-thon if you'd like. And be sure to post your craft pictures in the DIY Sheep Crafts group in the pinned post. You can post it anywhere, but to qualify for the giveaway, there's a designated post. Um, and I will tell you more about the giveaway soon as well. So I will see you all in the DIY Sheep Crafts group.